I want to thank you for joining me in this week's episode of Jason Stewart Photography. In this week's episode, we are going to be looking at a game changer in the world of photographic composition. And what that game changer is, is leading lines. We are going to be learning about and looking at how to use leading lines so that we can create beautiful images that inspire others. Leading lines are a compositional technique used by photographers in order to creatively draw our attention to the focal point in their image by framing or positioning the lines in such a way that they draw our eyes to a specific point in the image, which is their focal point. Mastering leading lines is a valuable skill for every photographer to have, and when it's used, can dramatically improve the composition and the impact that your image has upon your viewers. There are many different types of leading lines we can use in photography. To name a few, there are vertical lines, horizontal lines, even diagonal and circular lines and each line is used in order to draw the eyes of the viewer to a specific location in the image. And when this is done correctly, it helps create action and movement, and it attracts the eyes of your viewers to the focal point in your image. You may not realize this, but anytime we're viewing an image and there's leading lines, our eyes will naturally follow the leading lines to the focal point in the image, and it will make it more interesting for us to look at and want to discover all that's going on in that particular photograph. These leading lines can be just about anything. Trees, buildings, streams, pathways, dirt roads, paved roads. It could be people, lampposts, telephone poles, you name it. Whatever has a pattern and a line that is pointing in a particular direction, can be used as a leading line and help attract the eyes of your viewer into the focal point or main subject of your image. And in most cases, leading lines will begin at the bottom part of your image and cause our eyes to move upward or inward towards the focal point. Now, of course, this isn't every case with a leading line, but most often that's what you'll see when you see an image that has leading lines directing us to the main subject. And I'm very confident that as you begin implementing leading lines into your images, that you are going to notice a dramatic improvement in the quality of your photos. Now, again, you're not going to be able to use leading lines or even uh, any of the, or I should say all of the different compositional techniques that I've been sharing with you over the past month or so. You, you're typically not going to use every technique in one photo, although it is possible to. But uh, the main thing to remember with any photo, uh, compositional technique is that if there is a technique that you can implement, it will greatly improve your image and make it more appealing to your viewer's eyes. And so leading lines is one of those that is a, a, a game changer in photography when it's used correctly. And you're gonna see that as we start looking at some images now so that I can show you different ways that I've used leading lines to help enhance my photography. So let's look at some examples now. This first picture here is overlooking Frankfurt, Germany, and we see that the main river, that's what it's called, is the main river, and it's actually the longest tributary of the famous Rhine River, and in this image the main river is acting as a leading line as it runs through central Frankfurt, showing us the older part of Frankfurt on the north side, and the museum embankment and other tourist attractions are on the south side. But the main river, it acts as a leading line as it goes from the bottom of the image and it travels all the way up to the top and it just kind of directs our eyes as we go. Now in this next image we're looking at here, I call this Archways to Prayer. And this was actually captured in Jerusalem right near the Temple Mount. In this image I'm, I'm using the archways as well as the paved walkway as leading lines directing our attention to a man praying near the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And you can see that both uh, the, the walkway path as well as the archways themselves and the way the lighting is coming in, um, it just really makes for a powerful image, especially in Jerusalem at this location. Next is another image I captured in Jerusalem, and that is an image of the uh, Via Della Rosso Street 
and the, uh, obviously you probably know the Via Della Rosa is a processional route in the old city of Jerusalem and it's the path that Jesus walked on the way to his crucifixion and the story I was trying to tell here is that life can be lonely when we're carrying a cross and the high walls and the empty streets give us the impression of the infamous pathway and that it was a very lonely path. Next, let's look at this uh, image here. It, this is titled Riding Off Into the Sunset. And I captured this right as we were heading into uh, Idaho. And as you can see, there is a paved road. Uh, I actually, just to tell you a story, I actually pulled off here, as you can see. Uh, I'm in a pretty wide pullout, but it wasn't really the smart thing to do because I'm standing in front of my SUV as well, got my tripod out, and right after I snapped this one and only shot here, uh, CHP uh, pulled up next to me and told me I had to leave. I'm so thankful that he was gracious because I thought I was going to get a ticket. So he was very gracious and I, I got my one shot here, but as you can see in this shot, uh, there, uh, the paved road acts as a leading line and it goes off into the uh, horizon, but it also veers around left towards the sunset. And so it's leading our eyes, attracting our eyes to the focal point that I wanted, which is a beautiful sunset in Idaho. And so I hope you can see how effective leading lines can be for our photography. As we continue looking at leading lines, I want to give you four things to remember anytime you're trying to compose an image with leading lines. The four things that you want to remember are one, uh, subject, you want to have a clear subject just as you do with any photo you take. Secondly, when you're doing leading lines, you want to study the location you're at. Look around at the location. Are there any natural or man-made um, elements that will act as leading lines to help enhance the image you want to take? Thirdly, you want to look at composition. You Just because you found a leading line doesn't mean you've, you've, you've finished <laughs> The, the task, you also want to make sure you compose that leading line as it points to your subject in a way that makes sense and is compelling. And lastly, uh, lastly, but, but just as important is available light. How is the available light that you have working? Because available light can be a powerful tool when taking pictures. And so let's look at some more examples here. In this next picture here that I've titled The Water Racer, we see a young boy racing the water to the beach. You see on the other side of this wall here, there's actually a, a stretch of beach, uh, quite a bit of beach there where people are hanging out. And so what the kids were doing is they were uh, standing pretty much where I'm taking this photo from. And as soon as the tide would go out, uh, at a certain point, they would start running as fast as they can uh, to try to beat the water or the tide coming in by reaching the beach. And so that's what this kid's doing. And the leading line in this image, though, is not only the beach that is leading up to the boy, uh, but also the the wall that he's running alongside of it. It really makes for a powerful leading line in this image. The leading lines in this picture not only block out any potential distractions, but they also point us directly to the boy who is racing against the water. I hope you can see how the leading lines in that image called Water Racer really helped tell a powerful story. Let's go ahead and look at the second key thing we need to remember when trying to take pictures with leading lines, and that is location. We wanna be able to study the location that we're at and look for any natural or man-made elements that can help act as leading lines to point towards the focal point or main subject. And in this next image here, you can see this is my son, Jeremiah, and this is a picture I took when we were at a rope adventure park. And as we were navigating through this adventure rope obstacle course, I took advantage of the leading lines in this really cool tunnel my son was walking through by using the wooden sticks as leading lines. And because of it, these leading lines gives us a great feel of movement and direction. And as we talk about this second key element, or reminder of location, what about when we're doing landscape photography? Well, leading lines can be very effective 
uh, compositional techniques when doing landscape photography. And so you want to look for any potential leading lines that you can incorporate because it will really make a difference in the quality of your image. In fact, if you haven't had a chance to view my landscape video from Yellowstone that I released on August 16th, let me show you some footage from that where I'm explaining how I'm using leading lines in order to direct our eyes towards my focal point, which is the beautiful sunrise that's about to take place. Let's take a look at that part of the video real quick. As I said, the first time I came out to photograph this area, I felt like I missed my shot. And the shot that I really wanted is this next composition. Let me set it up for you. As you can see, the wooden bridge on the right is a leading line directing us out towards the sunrise, while the Firehole River is on the left of the screen, also forming a leading line pointing us towards the sunrise. Both the bridge and river work really well together as leading lines directing our attentions towards the beautiful sunrise. And then the steam rising up from the geysers adds to the overall experience and ambiance. And so this is the composition that I returned to Upper Geyser Basin for. And one of the things that I couldn't plan, but it worked out so well, is that another photographer came out and set up right in the perfect location. And he unknowingly became the main subject of my image and helped me to tell a much more powerful story with this image. He is going to help make this image happen for me by telling a story that says, being alone in nature can be a truly magical thing. Which is why I've titled this particular image, Alone in Nature. Whenever we take photos, we should always attempt to tell a story, and this lone photographer truly helps me accomplish this. Other things that I am purposefully doing here again is using the wooden bridge along with the firehole river as leading lines pointing us towards the subject and this draws our eyes upon him and the beautiful scenery surrounding him and we all know that spending time alone can be very rewarding at times not only to clear our minds but especially when we are doing something we enjoy for me it is being in this exact spot at this precise moment with my camera. This individual was one of a handful of people that was there with me when it was still dark and waiting for the sun to awaken the world. But for both of us, waking up at 4 a.m. and traveling over an hour from West Yellowstone in order to be here at this precise moment was well worth it. Okay. Well, hopefully that was helpful for you to see me out in the field applying what we're talking about right now. And so when you're out doing landscape photography out in nature, you want to look for those leading lines that are there, whether it's natural or as in the case of that image I just showed, uh, if it's man-made like the wooden deck. Well, actually, let me correct myself. It was both natural and uh, man-made because we use a wooden deck, but we also had the Firehole River that acted as a leading line as well. Both of them worked effectively as leading lines. What about in the city though, when you're in a city with high-rise buildings there are so many options and so many powerful architectural objects that you can use as leading lines in fact let's look at this next picture that i took on a trip to chicago of the sears tower as you can see this is the famous sears tower in chicago and i captured this image on a trip that my wife and i took to chicago as you can see there are several lines uh, within the architecture of this building that are pointing upwards and i use those leading lines to point up towards heaven in order to help tell the story of this once champion of the sky. You see, this was the tallest building in the world for nearly 25 years and the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere for 41 years until the new One World Trade Center that was recently built passed it in height in 2013. In this next image here, you can see a picture of two kayakers that are paddling upstream in Hawaii. They had just come off the open ocean and now they're paddling inward. And the leading line is the river that's taking them into the beautiful forest of the island of Hawaii. So once you've decided on your focal point or your subject, and you have really studied your location and found potential leading lines, 
The next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a strong composition. Without a strong composition, your image isn't going to go anywhere. And so you want to make sure that you compose your image in such a way that there, it draws the eyes of your viewers into your focal point. And as you can see in this next image of a roller coaster, I was very careful in the way I composed this image. I used the steel construction of the roller coaster as leading lines to point up towards our main focal point, which are the brave souls riding this monster roller coaster. The leading lines start at the bottom of the image and they rise all the way to the very top to give this image a great sense of height and movement. And finally, the fourth key point to remember when we're talking about leading lines is available lighting. We've looked at making sure you have a subject, making sure you study the location, and thirdly, we just saw that you wanna make sure you, you compose your image correctly. But next, you also want to uh, study the available lighting because available lighting can make a major difference in the way your image turns out. Looking at this next image I took of a man walking down a wooden structure, I, I used the available lighting I had, which was a sunrise at the time. And it was a bit, it was past sunrise, but the sun was definitely uh, uh, in front of this man. And, and that enabled me to use the leading lines that uh, are in this image that he's on, the, the pathway. I use these leading lines and I use the available light in such a way that I created a very strong contrast by creating a silhouette in the image. And anytime you can have silhouettes or use shadows as leading lines or part of the image, it really makes a dramatic improvement to many images. And so as you can see in this image, I used the sun in order to create a powerful silhouette of a man walking on a path. The wooden deck is a leading line that attracts our eyes directly to the man and the eerie smoke rising up from the Yellowstone Basin, it just really sets a, a mood there, especially with the sun shining through the smoke. But the reason this image is so striking is because I use the available light to create a contrasting silhouette and leading lines love this kind of available light. Well, I hope I've been able to show you how important leading lines can be for the photographs we take. They really do make a difference when we get it right. Before we go though, I want to talk to you about one other type of leading line, so to speak. It's not really a leading line though, it's actually called a leading path. Now leading paths, P-A-T-H-S, leading paths are different than leading lines. Although they're very similar in nature, there is a difference. And I want to look at that before we end this week's episode. Now the difference between a leading line and a leading path are actually quite simple. You see, a leading line will always take our attention to the focal point or to the main subject of our image, while a leading path will disappear in the distance. It doesn't take our eyes to the subject, nor does it take us to the focal point. It basically just vanishes in the, in the distance. Now, it's not a bad thing though. They both can be effective. But let's look at a few pictures that I've taken where leading paths have actually helped enhance the image. In this first image here that I've titled Stairway to Heaven, I took this image at Mount Hood National Park. And in this image, the wooden stairs take us to the top of the image, but not to a main focal point. The image itself is the focal point with the beautiful colors and the mist and trees, as well as the available lighting that is peeking through the trees. It, it just makes a beautiful composition. However, the wooden stairs are not leading lines because they vanish in the distance. Now, if there would have been a person or an animal at the top of these stairs, they would be leading lines as opposed to leading paths. In this next image here, we see another example of a leading path as the wooden walkway leads us out into a vanishing point, but not to the main subject, which is uh, the silhouette of a person walking through the mist. This isn't a failed shot though. The leading path plays a powerful part in this image, not only by giving us a line to follow out, into the distance, but also by framing the image for us. Now, in this final image, this is actually my favorite leading path image because I believe there's a powerful story here. I captured this when entering the Grand Tetons National Park. And you can see that the road on the left acts as a powerful leading path. And if it weren't for the sign, which is the main subject, it could potentially be a leading line for us. However, uh, the, the sign of Grand Teton National Park is our main subject. Therefore, the pathway that leads off and vanishes in the distance is 
a leading path. But let me tell you uh, about the powerful story that it tells. Uh, the leading path takes our eyes off into the distance and disappears into the horizon where we can see a camper van as well as, and this is the part I love, an eagle soaring overhead. And there's even the white snow-capped mountains in the distance. This image speaks of a great adventure that awaits anyone who travels into the Grand Teton National Park. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode on leading lines. I want to tell you, if you can master leading lines, it is going to dramatically improve the images that you take. And it's going to not only inspire the people who see your images, I'm telling you, it's going to inspire you to want to take more images. They just play a powerful role for photographers. Well, again, I, I hope you've been encouraged and I hope you've uh, found some value in this week's episode. And if you uh, found this episode helpful, can you do me a huge favor? Can you hit the like button as well as the subscribe button for me? You see, anytime you hit the like button or subscribe button, YouTube takes notice of it and it gets my channel out to a, a broader audience. Well, again, I want to thank you for joining me this week. Now go out and capture the world. Peace.